In this episode, we'll take a look at the Zoom F1 miniature audio recorder. Now, first of all, what is the Zoom F1? It's a miniature audio recorder, which allows you to wear it and connect a lavalier microphone to it, for example. Or you can also connect a variety of other microphones, including a shotgun microphone. And in fact, in this review, we're using the version of the Zoom F1 that comes with a shotgun microphone and a shock mount to mount it on top of your camera. What does it sound like? You're hearing exactly what it sounds like. Right now we're recording with the Zoom F1 and a Voice Technologies VT500 lavalier microphone, which is mounted just up underneath my hat right here. Now the VT500 is a professional grade lavalier microphone. I wanted to use a high quality microphone so you could hear kind of the potential of the Zoom F1. If you'd like to learn more about that particular microphone, we posted a review sometime back over here. Here's a sample of what the Zoom F1 sounds like with the shotgun microphone attachment on top of my camera. And in this case, it's recording into a Panasonic GH5S. The camera is approximately four feet, three and a half, four feet away from me right here. So this is what you can reasonably expect when you're doing that sort of running gun style with the actual microphone and recorder attached to the top of the camera. Now here's what it sounds like when I have the microphone boom just right above me here. So we have the Zoom F1 with the shotgun microphone attached to it and we have mounted it on a regular microphone stand using a 5 8 to 1 quarter inch adapter. The shock mount has a quarter inch tap on the bottom that you can attach that adapter to. So. This is what that sounds like for reference. And let's go ahead and give you a couple of moments of silence so that you can hear what the noise floor sounds like. Now you are hearing actual sound in the room. This light right here, the key light has a fan in it uh, the light behind me that's hitting the back of my head has a fan in it and there's a freezer over in that corner of the room. So there's just a sense of what that sounds like. This is really good news from the standpoint that it's sensitive enough to pick up room tone before you hear any of the self noise generated by the device itself. So that's a really, really good sign. In terms of pricing, the Zoom F1 with the lavalier microphone comes in at $199 US and the version with the shotgun microphone comes in at $249 US. It doesn't look like you can buy those accessories separate from the F1 currently, but presumably that should be possible in the future. In terms of build quality, this is a massive, massive improvement over the Zoom H1, the original small handy recorder that a lot of people used as sort of a lavalier pocketable kind of recorder and the interesting thing here is it seems like they took those that all those years of learning <laughs> of having that product out on the market which was wildly popular by the way and which i was quite a fan of and they've taken all of the kind of complaints about that and refined it into the zoom f1 so this is a really kind of a cool uh, step forward from that standpoint. The case is largely metal with some plastic. There are plastic buttons. There's a metal mic input with threads and also of course a metal headphone output. The threads are really nice because what that enables you to do is if you use a microphone with locking nut that keeps the microphone from getting pulled out in the midst of a recording which is kind of a big deal if especially you're shooting say for example a wedding or some other sort of kind of critical shoot where you really only get kind of one shot at things. There are these big metal bars on the back which serve a couple of different purposes. Number one they allow you to connect the shock mount if you are going to use this as a shotgun microphone mounted on top of your camera or you can also use it to connect to someone's belt and what's interesting about it is that the microphone input is actually on the bottom of the unit. At first I thought well that's weird but it actually kind of makes sense if you attach the Zoom F1 to your belt, it'll actually be upside down. But when you then need to look at the screen, if you are the one actually monitoring things, you just kind of pull it towards you and you can see the screen right side up. So it's actually, in the end, a rather clever and thoughtful design. The screen has a blue backlight and is very easy to read, not only indoors, but also outdoors in complete and direct sunlight. So they've definitely put some thought into how the screen works over the kind of the generations of their previous products. And this is no exception, it works very nicely. 
There is a lock setting on the power switch, which is really nice so that once you start a recording, it locks all the controls so you can't accidentally stop the recording or perhaps change one of the settings in the middle of a recording. Very nice feature, especially if you're going to be doing any sort of critical shoot, say for example like a wedding, where you would definitely want to make sure that something like that didn't happen. The battery door is plastic and a little bit awkward. The first time I used it, I didn't actually attach it correctly and it actually popped open, but with a little practice, you can figure out how it works. Not a huge deal, but uh, spend a little time getting to know how to make sure that it's entirely securely closed. At the top of the unit, there is a plastic cap over the proprietary Zoom microphone connector. It's a nice way to protect that connector and it seems to stay in place securely when you're not using one of these Zoom microphones. There is also a separate LED at the bottom of the unit to indicate when the recording is running and also in cases where the audio clips. That is to say, it gets so loud that it clips and distorts, which is something that can happen with digital recording, of course, but the Zoom F1 has done a couple of things to help prevent that situation. Now, first of all, in those situations where your talent suddenly gets very loud, there are a couple of different strategies that different recorders use to help address those types of situations. Number one is safety track recording, and number two is using a limiter. Now, there are different classes of limiters. The main kind of classes, I guess, are an analog limiter, which is kind of a more traditional limiter, which what they do is that when the talent suddenly gets very loud, they have a circuit that, essentially an analog circuit that comes and kind of prevents it from getting too loud and clipping and distorting. And those work very nicely in most cases. There is also what is called a digital limiter, and what happens in those cases is that the sound in the analog preamplifier already gets loud, and it gets converted to digital, and then the digital limiter kicks in. Those are not very effective. What Zoom has done is sort of a hybrid approach, um, from what I can tell here. This is certainly what they did in their Zoom F4 and F8 series professional recorders. Um, what they do is that when you turn the limiter on, the analog gain is actually reduced by 10 decibels. The audio then goes through the circuitry, it gets converted to digital, and then they add the 10 decibels back, except in cases where the talent got really loud, and then they don't add the, the additional uh, gain back. So that's actually kind of a very clever way of doing things. It does come, however, with a cost. The cost is that you do add a tiny bit of noise to the overall sound floor. Um, how much? About 10 decibels. <laughs> so it's just something to be aware of. It, uh, the limiter seems to work very, very nicely. Um, my preference is generally to not have to work with that if I don't have to. Um, but if I am working with a person who has a very kind of volatile voice, then that can be a better way to approach things. Now, on the Zoom F1, they did not include a safety track recording feature, which sort of surprised me. The Zoom F4 and F8 both include that feature, and some of their other recorders, I believe, also have that feature. So I was a little surprised not to see it in this early version. Perhaps they can add it in a future firmware update. I don't know but that is a suggestion that I would offer to Zoom. In terms of power, the Zoom F1 seems to do quite well. It is powered by two AAA batteries, and in this case, we did a test with two alkaline disposable AAA batteries. We have well over five and a half hours clocked on it so far, and it's still going strong with um, one out of three dots on the battery remaining, so we'll go ahead and publish the final figures here. In all of my testing so far, I have not experienced any sort of RF interference. That's radio frequency interference. Sometimes that can come from things like mobile phones, Wi-Fi hotspots, cordless phones. Anything that transmits wirelessly can potentially interfere with devices like this, and I haven't experienced any. So it does seem like they've done a pretty nice job shielding the overall circuitry from that type of interference. In terms of recording formats, you can record up to 96 kilohertz, 24-bit, in WAV format, and that is broadcast wave compatible, so pretty much any non-linear editor or video editing application can read those files. You can also record to MP3 if for some reason you wanted to do that. As another very nice touch, the Zoom F1 does include a headphone jack and volume controls for the headphone jack. The headphone amplifier seems to be pretty decent to me, very similar to the H1, maybe a little bit cleaner. Um, so you can monitor in real time or you can just review your recordings after the fact if you want to do that without having to download it first to a computer. So again, really nice set of features. So there's an overview of the Zoom F1, Zoom's new professional quality uh, personal uh, recorder. And overall, I think it's a really great device. One question that I know is going to come up is, how does it compare to the Tascam DR10L? Well, they're very similar in terms of what they do. They both are miniature recorders generally uh, designed to be kind of wearable recorders. 
The difference, I think, are a few. Number one, I think the big difference is that the Tascam is smaller. Um, I don't think the Tascam is built as well as a Zoom F1 in terms of overall durability. Uh, the Zoom F1 has a massive advantage from the larger screen that I think makes it a lot easier to operate and to see exactly what's going on. The meters are much easier to see. Um, all sorts of advantages that come with that. The Zoom can also take a line input, not just a microphone input. And you can also turn the plug-in power off. Also on the Zoom F1, you can connect all these other microphone capsules. So overall, it seems to me that the Zoom is a more versatile type of device. You can do more things with it. Uh, on the downside, it is a little bit bigger than the Tascam DR10L, and it also does not have the safety track recording feature, at least at the time of this review. So those are kind of the two downsides. Overall, if I had to choose one, I would probably choose the Zoom F1 for my personal use. So there's our overview of the Zoom F1. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that, and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. And if you'd like to be notified each time a new episode is released, go ahead and click on that bell icon. We'll talk to you again soon.